This Builder Gel video today is gonna be huge. What's up, Nail Crew? It's Nicole, your fellow Nail Obsessed DIYer. I'm gonna show you how I do a fill on both my left and my right hand, just so you can see all the tips and tricks for doing it with your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand. So I have Builder Gel on now, and I'm filing down some of the bulk just so that I can rebalance the apex when I do my fill. I know that everybody doesn't do that much. They'll maybe just file a little, but for me, I really like to file a nice amount down just so I can get that good apex going again when my nails are long. So I take my Panda safety bit and it's in coarse and I remove the bulk of it. When I did this Manny, I was testing some other bits. So I used a safety five in one bit. That's the one I'm using on my thumb right now. And it definitely works. It's also in coarse. It was removing the builder gel and the dip fine, but I felt like I had to press a little bit harder into my nail to get it to come to get the dip in the builder gel to come off and for me that's not something that I want to do I never recommend having to press into your nail hard so the other bit that I tried was this ceramic bit from Melody Susie and this one worked the best outside of my normal Panna safety course bit I really felt like the builder gel just glided off my nail I felt like I wasn't having to press down in hard I'll make sure I leave everything I use in this video in the description. So I'm going to use a bunch of different things. Everything's going to be in the description. Once I remove the bulk of my builder gel, I leave that base layer so that I can do the fill. I go in with a sanding band. I like to use the sanding bands to rough up the surface of my natural nail to make sure that the builder gel is not too smooth. And this way, you know, once I do the dehydrant and primer that my, that my new application will stick as well. I busted out one of my little ball bits that used to be my go-to for cuticles so that I could see like, do I still not like this as much as the other one? And I still like liked my other cuticle bit that I used on my right hand better. Once I'm totally done with doing all of my prep with the e-file, then I go in with ice purple alcohol. I spray the heck out of my nails, out of my gloves, and really wipe everything off so that there's no dust stuck on my hands or my gloves. If you don't have lint-free wipes, no big deal. Just use some clean paper towels, make sure they're nice and dry before you go and you wipe everything off your nails. So I'm getting off all the dust just to make sure they are nice and clean and ready to go for our builder gel fill. When you're doing the fill, you wanna start with dehydrator first. And the dehydrator is gonna do what exactly what it says, dehydrate your nails so that you're getting any of the oils, any of the dust, you're making sure that all that is off before you go in with your builder gel. Then I go in with primer and I do two layers on my nails. What I like to do is do five nails dehydrator, five nails primer, and then go back in with those same five nails for a second layer of primer. I sped up the video, but I'm really scrubbing it into my nails. You don't wanna put so much primer on that you're like flooding the heck out of your nails because that's actually gonna cause lifting, which that's the opposite of what we want the primer to do. The primer leaves a sticky residue down so that the builder gel can stick. Now, most people do need a layer of gel base down on their natural nails, before they do builder gel. But for me, if I do that layer of base gel down on my natural nails, my builder gel actually lifts. So I totally skip that. I've been doing that for like four years like that and it works great for me. So you do have to experiment to see like what's gonna work best for you. I'm using the CN Designer Dips Clear Builder Gel in a Jar. It's HEMA free. I absolutely love it. I have it on down as my base builder gel and I wanted to do a fill just to show like how beautifully it works for the fill as well. When you're doing the first layer of builder gel, you wanna scrub your slip layer of builder gel into your nail. And I've been trying to do that more. I've been trying to like play around, experiment with like different ways to get, you know, as much retention as I possibly can on my builder gel because I wear it in between my dip mayonnaise and I often just have builder gel down on my natural nails. You're gonna see as I do each nail, what I like to do after I put the slip layer down is do the bead of builder gel. So the slip layer is an uncured layer that's really thin that just helps the bead of builder gel glide down your nails.
I like to go in with a really thin nail art brush to really move the builder gel around to where I want it to be. And I want to do this side view of my pointer finger because you can really see how moving the builder gel around with that small nail art brush makes such a difference, right? Because when I first did my builder gel placement on there, it, the apex wasn't quite right. It was looking like a little too thick in the back and a little too thick in the front. Like there wasn't enough of that, that top of the apex. And if anyone is like struggling with where to place your apex, what you would do before you apply your builder gel is you want to press down with like, take your thumb and press down on the tip of your nail and wherever it makes a white spot in your nail is where you want the apex to be. So you'll see that's the highest point of what your builder gel should be. And that's where you know where to put your apex. That was a huge, huge help for me because now I know for each of my fingers where the apex is and make sure like as your nail length changes that you continue to look where your apex should be, right? Because when your nails are short, you don't really need much of an apex and it's going to be back further. I had to do a little bit of an extension on my ring finger well technically not even an extension basically i over filed my ring finger and filed it way in so i wanted to add some builder gel along the right side of my ring finger just to make sure that my ring finger like it, it, the shape wasn't so wonky it was just like way too thin because i had filed in the side kind of weird on the last the last mani so I went in with these new paper forms I was trying off Amazon. I absolutely love them. They have like the cuts on the sides already made, already dented in and they're stiffer forms, which if you're somebody who's new and is struggling with forms, sometimes a stiffer form might help you compared to like a more, some of the forms are more flexible, which is what I normally use, but I want to try, I want to try to find a stiffer one to see if like maybe that would help new people. So a lot of what I find what I tell you guys in videos is from all these years of me trying different products. So <laughs> I've tried probably at this point at least 30 to 40 different builder gels. I know I've tried over 35 brands of dip powders, over 60, 70 of dip powders. Um, <laughs> I like to try a ton of different things. When you get done with one finger of your builder gel application, you want to make sure you flash cure that for at least five to 10 seconds. Anytime you're doing extensions like I did with the paper forms, I flash cure those 15 seconds to make sure that then I can take the builder gel off, take the form off and then finish doing each nail and you do the full cure at the very end when you're done with all five nails. You do your pinky through pointer cure those together and then cure your thumb separately because you tend to hold your thumb at a weird angle. And now we can work on doing the builder gel on my right hand. So I'm right-handed. I'm going to be using my non-dominant hand, my left hand to do the application. I don't do the dehydrator and primer till I am ready to go on my right hand. I like to save that so that this way the primer can still be sticky. And something else that I make sure I do before I jump to my right hand is I let my builder gel on my left hand and cool off for at least like 30 seconds before I spray it with alcohol and what and you know wipe off the tacky dispersion layer so none of that is touching my skin or my hands when I'm working on my right hand. I feel like it has taken me years to really get better at using my left hand to do builder gel. I felt like it didn't take as long to get as good with my left hand doing dip powders, but doing the builder gel definitely um, did not feel natural using my left hand since I'm right-handed. So when I'm doing my slip layer, I really have to focus on keeping that slip layer thin. And then I always flip my nail over and you see me do this for every nail. So anytime that I put a new application onto my nail. I flip the, my nail over. So I do my slip layer and don't cure that. And as I'm getting my bead of builder gel, I flip my nail over. I keep flipping my nail overs, my nails over because that builds your apex naturally. So when you do that, flipping your nail over, you'll see, especially if you just like tilt it up a tiny bit when it's flipped over, you'll see that the apex starts to come up to the right place. And that's something that really helps, you know, whether you're a beginner or or whether you've been doing it for years, flipping your nail over helps to get your apex 
to build naturally because it's going to self-level if you have a good builder gel it's going to self-level into you know the, the area that you want it to be then you can use that detail brush to really get the builder gel exactly where you want it to be something that i'm also super super careful of is getting any builder gel on my skin so you'll see throughout the video that sometimes i'm using this angled cleanup tool what i do is i i dip it in ice purple alcohol and then wipe any of the builder gel that gets on my skin i wipe that off and then literally wipe it onto like a clean piece of paper towel that's off camera because i want to make sure i am not curing any builder gel on my skin that is huge if you're doing builder gel for the first time or you're doing it for the hundredth time not curing builder gel on your skin or any gels because you know i've seen such a huge jump in allergies over the past five years since i started doing my nails and i think a lot of it is because i see people not you know not wiping off gel on their hands um and also using you know low quality brands that have lots of hema so some some of the things that you have to do when you're using your non-dominant hand is you have to work a little bit slower so that was something that was frustrating to me but you know now after like four years i can pretty much do my left hand as quickly as i can do you know use my left hand as quick as i can do my right it's okay if you go slower it's going to take longer using your non-dominant hand because you're just not used to that and taking your time too is going to make sure that you're not getting that product on your skin that's something that i really like want to make sure if you're a beginner that it's totally okay that it's going to take you longer using your non-dominant hand so i just am much more careful and using that thin nail art brush the detail brush whatever you want to call it that helps so much i so wish i would have done this years ago because i feel like i would have progressed in my builder gel journey so much faster had i used that thin nail art brush and then you do the same thing as you did on your left hand you do a flash cure in between each nail and then when you're done with all your nails you do the full cure still do your pointer through pinky set together and then your thumb separate to make sure that you know you're really laying your nails flat then what I do is once my builder gel cools, I'll spray the right hand as well. I'll respray my left hand. I go in with all my filing and shaping. So I like to do that by hand. I know some people like to use a um, an e-file. I even though I love my e-file, I prefer to do all my shaping and filing by hand. So I take a flexible file. They're these big flexible files that I get from OG Dip Powder, and that is what how I get my builder gel super super smooth because. I use peel base directly over it then to dip. If you don't want to use peel base over and dip or you just want to leave your builder gel or you want to do gel, you can still go through, do all your buffing and filing and shaping, make sure that everything is good to go. And then when you spray your nails off with alcohol, like I do at the end, then you would just go in with dehydrator and primer again to use your gels. If you need way more help with Builder Gel, make sure you check out my first pinned comment. It is a link to my Builder Gel 101 Ultimate Guide to Applying Builder Gel Nails at Home. And if you want to see more Builder Gel in real time, make sure you check out this next video. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nail Crew.